Hi, Adam Basiljet back here in Naples, Florida. I'm two-time PGA Teacher of the Year Award winner here in Florida. And today's subject, kind of an interesting golf swing, great player for sure, Zach Johnson. So let's check that out. So Zach Johnson, terrific player, won the British Open last year, won at Augusta a few years back. Kind of an individual style there with his grip and his move, but we'll have a look at that. And we'll come back at the end of it, and I'll tell you what are the things I think you can take away from it. What are the ways you might be able to play around with this and see if it's a good match for you? And what are the pitfalls you should watch out for? But let's have a look at him here. Let's see him from a couple of angles. If you like this video, please subscribe to the channel. Would love to get you more free content coming. ScratchGolfAcademy.com is my home website. We have full courses in every aspect of the game, plus one-on-one -on -one internet lessons with me. Okay, let's check out Zach. So there's Zach Johnson. He has what we call a strong grip. That means it's pre-rotated away from the target there in the setup. And when you start with your arm pre-rotated that way, you're more liable to rotate the face to the left or a hook face through impact. Of course, he doesn't do that. So let's look at how he accomplishes that. Now, let me just say, hey, listen, let's bring an iron shot in here for a second. Not, not the greatest camera quality, but let's have a look. When you have a predisposition with your grip to hit it to the left, but you're able to use your body and not let the hands roll over through the ball, I mean, it's pretty rare to see someone that good with the glove up here at that point. Most times that left forearm is folded a lot more and the club is released a lot more than that. But when you can do that, you are going to hit a lot of straight shots, a lot of on-target shots, because the face is very inactive at the bottom. So Lee Trevino, same sort of a, a method there. So th that's his calling card, is he's an accurate, accurate player, a steady guy, doesn't get it off the golf course very often. Of course, he's a very tenacious guy with a great short game as well. And that's just how he goes about shooting those scores. So that's the advantage. It's my understanding that he has had a strong grip and that general tendency in his release since he was a junior golfer there or a younger player. So that suits him well. Here he is with a driver. Has a relatively short backswing there. Gets those hips started. If you're with the kind of speed he has, and he's not the longest hitter in golf by a mile, but with the kind of speed he has a, a lot relative to most people, you have to really use your body well there and use your hips well to prevent that club from flipping over. But interestingly enough, as we look at him from this angle, he certainly doesn't have the quickest hip motion you'll see. I mean, watch when his left knee disappears from view there on the left, and it's about there. A lot of players are a lot more open with their hips than that as they come down. So it's not so much that he has lightning fast hips, but that he continues to use them and continues to move through the ball and continues to drive those glutes underneath him that keeps him in a position, keeps that club from rolling over at the bottom. So as we look again from this angle, pretty simple posture. Club face just visible there. It's not super shut, but it's, it's shut a little bit, and it's shut with a strong grip. That club is a, oh, it's a little closed right there, but again, he's got great body motion and can get through there and do it. And that's his calling card, is he's an accurate golfer. Now, let me just say, copying people's swings isn't always the only way you can copy people. How about his, how about the kind of guy he is? How about mentally? I don't know him personally, but I know a fair bit about him. He's a little bit like a Jim Furyk in so much as he's a very steady, reliable sort of guy, very hard working. He's just a plot along guy. He's a great short game, leaves nothing to chance, and he just puts his time in and grinds it out and is able to get a game there that he can really trust and make work well. So, you know, for me, hey, listen, I'd love to be like Phil Mickelson or Fred Couples, a kind of a creative, hot and cold sort of guy, mostly hot in their cases, I might add, but they're the kind of people that... Hey, they've got a lot of talent, and when they catch fire, when they get a little bit inspired, they are impossible to stop, but they can run hot and cold a little bit. Kind of looks like a fun way to play, but that's not me. I'm more of a worker ant, I'm more, more of a guy like Zach Johnson. So if that's more you, don't just copy his swing, maybe. Copy the diligence, the short game, the approach to, the disciplined approach to getting around the golf course, and you can make something out of that. So in the sh long and the short, strong grip, would predispose him to hit it left, you would think. 
but great motion, doesn't have the quickest hips in golf, but they really keep thrusting and pumping through the shot, and they're enough to keep those hands from rolling over excessively. One other thing I notice a little bit in his move, he has a little bit of a tilt back with his upper body, even on an iron. If you watch his head there relative to the trees, he adds a little bit of away from the target tilt with his spine, and my guess is with the de-lofted club face, it helps him get a little more height on the ball. And it's probably to do with those hips kind of thrusting underneath him. When they really thrust under, it'll tend to cause a little side lean. But I think that's a good combination with his grip and club face style. So let's have a look at what we might learn from that, what we might take away from that, and whether or not you should try to mimic some of these things. So what can you take away from Zach Johnson's swing? Well, I think there's several things you can take away. Number one, the idiosyncrasies he has with the stronger grip and the slightly or somewhat closed face, let's say, are matched off by what he does through the ball. He uses his body and he patterns his release in a way that's very, very repeatable. So you've got to have matches. What you don't want to do is just say, you know what, I'm going to try something funky here without any sense of what needs to be paired up with it to make it work. Second thing, remember there's different things that work. Hey, listen, two of the best ball hitters in history, Lee Trevino and Ben Hogan, had dramatically different grips and different club face looks, so it worked for them. Fred Couples actually had the very strong grip, but because he cupped his wrist so much, he had a pretty neutral club face and had a lot more kind of snap in his release, so there's different combinations. The thing is, though, you've got to get, as I say, you've got to get a matching combination. You've got to get one that's two things, easy for your body, Hey, listen, if you're young and flexible and you hit the ball a long way and maybe you hook some, maybe this is a great tonic for you. You've got a lot of energy here, a lot of speed, and you can control the ball better. But maybe if you're a senior golfer who's had a hip operation, you don't have much speed, you don't really hit the ball off the golf course, but you don't hit it very far, you might need a pattern that has a little more snap and release and pop in the club head. So pick something that is good for your body, that works for your body, and I guess innately, something that you feel like you can deliver the club a consistent way, you can count on the shot shape under pressure day in, day out on the golf course. For some players, that's been a little fade. For some players, a little draw. For a lot of players these days, it's relatively neutral. But something you feel like you can trust that's an easy way to get the ball out there in front of you. And just remember as well, hey listen, there's things you can play around with, grips a little bit release patterns, etc. but there's some things that are really non-negotiables. I mean, nobody ever played well with the club passing their hands this way through impact. I don't think anybody played well with excessive upper body side to side or up and down movement. It's got to be relatively steady, and of course down here, you, at the bottom where you're hitting the ball, your club has to be on a decent plane going roughly towards the target. You can't be way out to in or in to out. So don't just experiment in any area. Experiment in some minor patterns that you think might help you. And as I say, that you think would be good for your body. So in this case, I got a seven iron. I'm going to give it the old Zach Johnson special grip. And I'm going to make a small shot and just punch it out there and see if I can control that release, that's kind of his look. It's a nice low driving straight shot. I'm not sure that's the best swing match for me. It certainly works for Zach Johnson. Hope this helps. Well, I hope you enjoyed looking at Zach Johnson's golf swing there, and I hope you got a little something out of the, the stuff we laid out at the end, but how you can experiment a little bit in your own game to find the right match. ScratchGolfAcademy.com is my website. Have one-on-one -on -one internet lessons with me, all sorts of videos in different parts of the game. And of course, this channel is the YouTube channel. Would love to have you subscribe to that. Please leave a comment or a request. This was a request, actually. And uh, we'll try to get to it. Thanks.